A parliament readying itself for the rest of its term ahead of the next general election. The government will take stock of the work done during a mid-term break and set out its direction. Priorities, policies and programmes will be laid out by the President when Parliament reconvenes next month. These will then be debated by MPs. To discuss what this means for Singapore politics, we have with us in the studio Associate Professor Eugene Tan. He's from the School of Law at the Singapore Management University. Prof, it's good to see you again. Well, thank you for having me. So we have got this midterm break. It's a chance for the government to take stock of all the work that's been done. We've seen a lot of robust debate. Uh, and of course, we've had the COVID-19 pandemic as well through all of this. What were some of the, the key uh, sort of highlights for the past two and a half years? You know, Dawn, when we look at the 14th Parliament, uh, you know, we sometimes forget that uh, it started live, you know, with 10 Workers' Party MPs being elected. Uh, we then had two non constituency MPs, uh, both from the Progress Singapore Party, and then nine nominated MPs. Um, so the, the largest presence of uh, non-government MPs uh, since the 1968 uh, general election. Then there was also the live streaming of parliamentary proceedings uh, on, on YouTube. You know, again, something that we take for granted. Um, but you know, that has certainly got more people being able to follow uh, the proceedings in Parliament from the comfort of, of wherever they are. And I think that has generated, you know, a lot more interest. You know, so I observe that in a typical uh, sitting, there could be up to a thousand viewers at, at, at different points. Um, but I think if we look at the output, um, you know, in terms of uh, parliamentary questions, in terms of uh, ministerial statements that were delivered, and there were about 30 of them, uh, or debating on motions, right, you know, whether they relate to women's development, for example, there were about 20 of them. And over the last two and a half years, you know, more than 100 bills were debated uh, and passed by Parliament. And of course, there, was also, there were also five budgets, you know, during the height of the pandemic, you know. So when you think about the workload, I think this was a massive amount, uh, you know, and operating under very difficult conditions, right? So there were, there were safe distancing measures, you know, constitutions amended to, uh, in case, you know, MPs need to sit and attend hearings from different locations. Um, so I think when we look at this, you know, I would say that, uh, you know, it has been, you know, a very significant first session of the 14th Parliament. Um, but there were also, you know, the, the down the so, not so good moments, right? So we had the Committee of uh, Privileges uh, hearing uh, into uh, former Workers' Party, uh, Ms. Raiza Khan, you know, which also then involved, um, you know, the leader of opposition, uh, Mr. Pritam Singh, as well as uh, the fellow MPs, Mr. Faisal Manap and Ms. Sylvia Lim. Um, but I think, you know, you're right to say that there was a lot of robust debate. Um, you know, there was a lot of, in a way, drama as well. But they were also hand grappling with very difficult issues, right, over the last uh, two and a half years. All right, so at this point, so mid-term break, we look at what we have done well, maybe consolidate that, or, and you say grappling with difficulties, maybe looking ahead at how to manage them better. Uh, the new session, which uh, reconvenes on the April, April the 10th, what do you think that session will say when it sets out the agenda for the rest of the years. Yeah, so we are come, we are we're gonna we have started on the second half of uh, the current parliament's term, uh, and and that will segue you know into the general election you know which will have to be held latest by November 2025. So I would expect the government you know to sharpen you know its program of action right its policies. Uh, I, I think you know th there will be a focus in this second half on delivering outcomes. Um, and I think one key focus, right, you know, for the government, you know, will be the Forward Singapore consultation, you know, that they will want to debate on, on, on the eventual report that will come out in the second half of this year. But more importantly, you know, to, to be able to pass laws and, and, and put in place policies, um, you know, to strengthen uh, the social, social compact in Singapore. That, of course, has been a concern for Singaporeans, you know, you know the, the, the desire for a, for a fairer, more just um, society, 
and to, to try to reduce income uh, inequalities. Um, so I would say that, you know, that is one key um, agenda, right? And of course, earlier on, you know, Parliament debated the white paper on women's development. And I think there will also be the expectation, um, you know, that there'll be policies and laws, you know, to be able to promote, uh, you know, women's development. Uh, so, so there are issues that, that have, that remain from the first session that we will see the second session, you know, taking them, you know, a step further. Uh, okay. So I would say that, you know, the, ag the agenda is packed. And to me, the, the rather short prorogation, you know, of about two and a half weeks uh, does suggest that, you know, they do have a packed calendar. And I think, you know, all the parties, the three parties in parliament, you know, will want to put up a good showing, you know, so that they can go to the voters, you know, with as strong a report card as possible. There are plenty of outstanding issues, uh, Prof Tan. Uh, as you say, uh, this move towards a more egalitarian, a fairer society, these are a big evergreen issues, uh, not necessarily solvable uh, in one go uh, or, or even in one parliament. An entire five years, you might not see that. Uh, but you also said that you expect active uh, parliament sessions. You said that you expect them to be demanding and challenging earlier on uh, in an interview you did. How challenging do you think they're going to be? I think it will be just as, ch ch as challenging as the first session. You know, I, I do expect things to be a lot sharper, a lot more robust, a lot more edgier, uh, you know, in this second session, um, you know, because I think vote Singaporeans, you know, will be looking out, you know, because we are now in a way less concerned about the pandemic and, and the concerns are really now how can we build on Singapore's recovery? How can we protect ourselves, you know, from similar events uh, in future, right? And, and so I think, you know, the, the debate earlier this week, you know, as your reporter Lauren Ong mentioned earlier, you know, provides that, that nice segue, you know, closing one chapter and opening another. Um, so I think, you know, we, we can expect the legislative and agenda to be packed. And, and I think we will, want to, we will see the parties, you know, trying to show, you know, that they are all wanting to make lives better for Singaporeans. I, but of course, the question is, you know, how far uh, have they succeeded, uh, you know, in, in persuading Singaporeans? And, and I think this is where the second half, the second session of the 14th Parliament, you know, will see uh, MPs, you know, battling it out, um, you know, trying to leave uh, you know, a strong impact. Okay, final question here. Uh, you mentioned this relatively short prorogation this time around of two and a half weeks. Now, I'm going to cheat here, referring to an interview that we ran earlier on Asia Tonight on this channel, where you said you did not expect, I paraphrase you, sure. you did not expect a cabinet reshuffle uh, this time, perhaps later this year, but not during the, 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 this break that we're having. But uh, when we chatted quickly before you joined us again for this bulletin, you said you might have changed your mind on that. Well, I, I think, you know, the, the, there will be a cabinet reshuffle. I think the big question is, when will it take place uh, and how extensive uh, it will be? Um, so I would say that, you know, there, there certainly will be a cabinet reshuffle. Um, you know, I think the two and a half weeks might be too short a time, but anything can happen. But I would expect the reshuffle to be fairly extensive, you know, because uh, last year's reshuffle, you know, was rather minor in involving mainly junior uh, minister, junior ministers. Um, so the last major reshuffle was in 2021, where seven ministries saw new ministers. Uh, and we also have four ministers, you know, that have been in their positions uh, since 2020. Um, so I think it, it all augurs, you know, for the likelihood, you know, that, that PM, PM Lee Sen Lung, you know, in, in this latter half of the parliament's term, you know, will find it opportune, you know, to expose the ministers to new assignments, new challenges, uh, and, and for them, you know, to bring fresh perspectives, new energy, you know, to the many issues that Singapore have to deal with, both long-term and short-term. Prof Tan, thank you very much for coming into the studios and talking to us about this uh, a break with Pali proceedings. Uh, we've been speaking there to Associate Professor Eugene Tan from SMU.